Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Welcome to everybody online. Hallelujah. Let's all stand and worship the Lord this morning. Father, we just praise you this morning. We thank you, God, that you brought us all here this morning, that we're here worshiping you, Lord. We just ask, God, that you would reach down and you would just touch each and every one of our hearts, Lord, because we need you this morning. We need a touch from you, whether it be in our hearts, in our bodies, in our minds, or in our spirit. God, we just need you this morning, and we want to praise you, Lord. We want to bless you with this time of worship, Father. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your. 
Let's sing that again. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing Your song again. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name we praise you God we like never be Oh, my soul, I will worship your holy name. On that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul sings. Praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His soul Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. We praise you, Jesus, sing like never before, oh my soul, I will worship Your holy name, so I will worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I will worship Your. Lord, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Praise the Lord. Before you seated, why don't you turn around and greet somebody this morning. Say hello. Give them a big hug. And if you're at home, you can turn around and greet whoever's next to you. Good morning, everyone. Please find your seats. This is a lot different than the uh, comedy clubs I used to do. <laughs> Anyways, I'm uh, Jerry Gonzalez, uh, better known as Selena's husband or Ava's dad, but uh, my name is Jerry. And uh, welcome to church, and uh, welcome to church online also. We're glad you're here. Got a great message coming up with Pastor Micah. Uh, just a couple of announcements. One is the uh, Connect cards. If you're new, uh, fill them out. Or if you have a prayer request or something weighing on your heart, put it on the Connect card and we'll have a team or someone reach out to you. Thanks, babe. Um, today we're collecting the shoe boxes. Uh, thanks again for being very generous and uh, we'll be touching some lives out there, some people that maybe wouldn't have got anything. Uh, now they have a box of goodies. So uh, that's, that's great. You know, I, did, I wasn't going to say this, but uh, about 10, 15, about 20 years ago, Walmart came out with a commercial, and they took a bunch of kids in uh, during Christmas time and just say, you know, hey, go get whatever you get, whatever you want. I'm, I'm sure they gave him a, a budget, and they had it was it was uh, these big burly firemen, you know. They 
just big, strong dudes. They had that fireman mustache. And uh, the, I guess they got the burliest one in the crowd, and he was talking. And he goes, yeah, the first thing these kids did was they went, and then he started tearing up, which makes everyone watch, watching tear up. He goes, the first thing they did was find something for their moms. And I was like, oh, man, jeez. <laughs> It just kind of hits you right here. Anyways, for some reason, I wanted to tell that story. All right. <laughs> Ooh. All right, the GO team is launching a new way to serve. And uh, we'll be creating bags filled with essential items to give to the homeless. And if you would like to be involved in that or give a gift, a gift towards uh, that, you can talk with Marcy Brown after church all right <laughs> and uh this is it this saturday saturday the 27th at 10 a.m we will be decorating uh the sanctuary for christmas so if you'd like to help out uh, make some time to do that our sanctuary in here yes alice okay um that's it. Oh, the main reason. Um, we're going to collect our tithes and offerings. Uh, we have a drop box here in our sanctuary, and then you can give online uh, through the app. I believe there's a button at the very bottom. Um, so uh, let's bow our heads and pray for the, our tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for providing for us, Lord, and watching over us and, you know, keeping us safe and, you know, I, I, my heart just keeps going to these homeless people out there. You know, most of us, all of us have a roof over our heads, Lord. We have food to eat. We don't have to worry about those things, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that you provided for us in this last year and a half, two years with the uh, pandemic and everything else going on in the world, Lord, you were, you were there faithfully and providing and, and um, just ensuring that we made it through here. Uh, some of us, it was a test of faith and uh, I don't know, I just, I just pray, Lord, that these tithes and offerings we use to glorify you. In uh, Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. And now, Pastor Eddie. Now, Pastor Micah. Now the video. Everyone out there, cozy on their couch this morning. Come on. Hey, welcome. It's good to see you. It's a little bit windy today. Did you have your coffee this morning? Is everyone awake? Good to go? All right. Did you have your tea this morning? Hot chocolate? <laughs> Cup of water? Good. Good, good, good. 
Well, uh, this week is Thanksgiving. It's always, it's always a wonderful time to celebrate, to eat food. Uh, as Pastor Eddie reminded us this morning, to bring your stretchy pants, um, to buy some nice sweats if you don't have some already, so you can eat as much turkey as you possibly can. And uh, it's a week for family and for friends and for watching football and doing nothing. <laughs> so God bless you and your oven this week if you're cooking. And I pray that thing holds up to, to bake a big old turkey. And I uh, pray that your stove holds up and your gas is ready to cook all those yummy yams. Good, good, good. Well, we're going to look today at First Chronicles chapter 16. And the title of my message this morning is Give Thanks to the Lord. Give Thanks to the Lord. And as I got a bunch of slides today, so you're going to have to keep up with me up back there. Okay, bro? Thank you. Give thanks to the Lord. What a wonderful... I, I don't think there's ever a... Uh, there's never a... a a time where we don't give thanks to the Lord, but especially coming upon Thanksgiving, it's, it's so good to give thanks and give thanks to the Lord. <laughs> so not to be distracted by giving thanks for all the things that we have for the people in our lives, but to say, you know what? Our primary giving of thanks is going to be unto the Lord. Here in Chronicles, uh, David begins to build the city. He builds his house and some other beautiful buildings, and, and uh, he would like to build a temple, but he doesn't. He doesn't get to. His son Solomon is going to be the one to build the first temple. And so uh, he built, puts up a tent, a nice, beautiful tent in the city. And that was going to be the place that would, would house the Ark of the Covenant. And so going into the city, they, they go and they, they bring the Ark, which was in the field of, I believe his name was Obed, Edom, I believe. And they bring it out of his, his house and his residence and the, the temporary tent that they had set up there, and they bring the ark into the city, and there's rejoicing and dancing and celebrating and sacrifices. And so they get the ark, and they, they travel, and they, they bring it into the city. And now we have this moment where the entire nation gathers. The Bible tells us everyone is like, we're, we're going to Jerusalem to see this. The ark of the covenant brought into the, the tent. And this, this signified the presence of God. This signified God dwelling amongst his people. I'm grateful now we have the Holy Spirit, and we have him dwelling in our hearts. But at this point, the whole nation gathered because they said, you know what? We, we want to see the Ark of the Covenant with, you know, the tablets that, that were crafted by God on the mountain and given to Moses. They said, we, we want to see this Ark go by. And so it was great celebration and great awe and wonder. And the presence of God is, is coming into the city. This is what it signifies. It's a beautiful moment. And any time the, the presence of God, you know, is... Uh, is here, there's reverence, isn't there? There's awe, there's wonder. We see people in the scriptures, they take off their shoes and they, they put their face to the ground and there's a sense of like, God, we, we are weak and feeble in your presence. You are a mighty God. And really we surrendered you in, in, a, in a posture of reverence and, and fear. And so here's this moment where they gather around to celebrate the presence of God coming into the city. And, and we read here this beautiful song that people sing, probably com uh, definitely comprised of a different, uh, couple different psalms, but uh, they said, you know what, we're, we're going to sing this song to the Lord. And so I want to look here with you um, at this beautiful song. Let me pray for us, and we'll jump right in. Jesus, we uh, come to you this morning, we, we, we want to say thank you. Thank you for um, family, for friends. Thank you, God, for uh, life today. Thank you for what you provided for us. We're grateful. And we want to look to you today, and our, we want to place our focus entirely on you, Jesus. Our entire selves we give to you in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, how, how, how heavy do you think this is? Do you, do you think it's this uh, cast iron pan here is heavy enough for me to carry maybe for 10 minutes, 20 minutes? What do you guys think? Not too bad, huh? Most of us in here could probably carry this this cast iron pan for, what, maybe an hour? What do you think? You don't think you can carry it in your hand for an hour? Maybe switch hands back and forth? How about, do you think you can carry this? Do you think it's have, so heavy to where I'd have to carry this pan? I'd have to uh, use like two hands. Do you think I could carry this for three hours? What about like six? 
What about 24? What if I literally just had to carry this pan with me nonstop all the time? Do you think it'd be pretty heavy? It would, wouldn't it? And it would, the burden of it would, would get increasingly harder as I went. And at first, for sure, I could carry this. I can cook some food. I can clean up. But then I'm going to put it down, right? But if I was to carry this pan and just make it like a part of my life on a regular basis, this thing is going to wear me out. I won't be exhausted. I won't be angry. I might even hit somebody with it. I don't know. And this thing pretty soon, what was easy at first, and I could carry by myself, and I could carry in my own strength and my own power, and I could say, you know what? I got this. Pretty soon, this pan would be the death of me because... It's my own burden to bear that I picked up and wouldn't let down, and I wouldn't let anyone else, else carry it with me. And, and I'll, I would ask you this morning, what is the thing that maybe you've had in your hand, maybe the thing you've had in your heart, maybe the thing you've had in your mind, and at first you thought you could carry it, and then it became something that was all, I mean, it was too much, too heavy, too burdensome. I wonder today if we have some things that we need to lay down and say, you know what, God, I, I, I need to give this to you because I've been carrying it too long and it's too much of a burden and it's too heavy for me to bear. I wonder what things we need to lay before the Lord this morning and allow him to bear with us. I want to look at a couple of things here. The first one is this. The focus of our remembrance should always be on God. The focus of our remembrance should always be on God. Something that happens when we trust God and when we turn to him and say, you know what, God, I, I need you for everything in my life. There's something that happens when we shift our attention and our focus to him. There's something that happens when we lay down the thing that is burdening us. Okay, here we go. We're going to jump in and look at these verses together. Starting in verse 4, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 4. It says, uh, David appointed some of the Levites as ministers before the ark of the Lord to celebrate and to thank and to praise the Lord God of Israel. What a beautiful moment there. It says, Asaph the chief, second to him, Zechariah, then Jael, then Shemaiah, Shemiramoth, I practice that one, it's so hard, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Menathiah, Eliab, Benaniah, Obed-Edom, and Jael, music, with musical instruments, harps and lyres, and Asaph played loud sounding cymbals, and the priests, Benaniah and Jehaziel, blew trumpets continually before the Ark of the Covenant of God. Then on that day, it says, David first assigned Asaph and his relatives to give thanks to the Lord. So as we see with, uh, with, Nehemiah, with Nehemiah, as we said, we, we saw the, the order in the temple. We saw the way that the sacrifices and the tithes would be collected. We saw worship, and, and we saw the leaders in place. And so same here with David. He's getting things organized and getting things set up, and it's like, okay, you're singing here, you're playing here, this is how it's going to work, and uh, everyone's got their instruments ready to play and worship, ready to serve in the temple, so that people could be ushered into the presence and worship God. Now, what a, what a beautiful moment of, of worshiping God. David uh, prepares the ark, and he puts it in the temple, and it's, it's time to celebrate. Man, they were going to celebrate. Again, I, I love these passages that remind us that celebrating what the Lord has done is a good thing. To celebrate and to praise and to give thanks, it says. And the big idea is all this, they're going to gather and they're going to get everyone around and say, you know what, we're, we're going to give thanks for who God is and for what he's done. Just as Moses in Exodus chapter 15, he did the same thing. He said, we're, I'm going to praise God for all that he's done. What he did to bring us out of Egypt was nothing short of never before seen miraculous. Same as Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 2. She says the same thing. God, I, I'm so grateful. And their, their overwhelming uh, words to the Lord is, there's, there's nobody like the Lord. Look what he's done. There's nobody like him. Look what the Lord has done. There is nobody like him. And when we have this kind of heart, what happens is it's, it's really easy to give thanks. It's really easy to, it puts life in perspective like, wow, look what God has done for me. Wow, look what God has done for my family. And then what happens is our, our life takes this, this posture of like, wow, I, I can't help but give thanks to God. I can't help but, but write a song and sing it. When's, when was the last time you were so overwhelmed by God that you were like, I, I need to sit down and write a song about this. This is amazing. This is what's happening here. The Levites had their instruments out, 
ready to celebrate, to thank, and to praise God. What a picture of the people God, of God being prepared to worship. I love that he describes the loud, the loud symbols. He puts that in there, right? I love that he describes the trumpets. We see trumpets all around the Bible. God love, why does God love trumpet players so much? I don't know what it is, but we see trumpets all the time in the Bible. I love it. Uh, I remember when I, was, when I was in Bible college, there was always somebody who had their guitar ready, ready to lead a worship song. Was it the same for you, Eddie? Dan, I bet it's the same. Anyone else who was in Bible college, like there's always somebody with a guitar, like, oh, you want me to play a song now? Okay, I'll play a song. And they'll play a song all the time. Someone with a bongo, too, usually, and they're under their arm. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we're going to play a song? Okay, we're ready. And we play a song in class, after class, sitting in the cafe, doing homework outside at Starbucks. Uh, I, I live in Hawaii, so on the beach and in our dorm room, there's always someone ready to play a worship song. And this, this is kind of the picture we get here, like, hey, let's, let's be prepared to worship God. Let's be prepared to praise Him. The second, number two is this, you can write this down. I will vocalize who God is in my life. I will vocalize who God is in my life. Honestly, this is a wonderful passage to write down. This is going to be one of the next ones that I memorize. Because there will be times in our life where we don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. We don't know our next step in life. And these, how many verses? Four, five verses right here, I believe are a great starting point when we are clueless. Listen to how good this is. Each of these actions that help us to praise God. Look at this. Verse 8, it says, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. That right there could solve most of our problems, couldn't it? Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. In other words, we're not going to keep this to ourselves. God is too good to not share with others. Verse 9, sing to him. Sing praises to him. Speak of all his wonders. I wonder how, how different our days would look if we took this posture of singing to God and singing praises to him. Verse 10, boast in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be joyful. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his wonderful deeds which, which he has done, his marvels and the judgments from his mouth. Look at this attitude of expectancy. Imagine if we had the, these phrases on our mind, these, these thoughts deep in our heart where it's like, I don't know what to do. Well, I'm, I'm going to sing praises to the Lord. I'm going to call upon the Lord. Well, I don't know what to do. I'm going to boast in his name. This, this sets his level of expectancy. Like, I don't know what to do, but I'm expecting that God is still going to show up and work. Like, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to take this step. I'm going to seek him, and I'm going to expect that he's going to show up, and he's going to help me. He's going to provide for me. There's this expectancy that I have in my heart. I know God can work. My kids have this kind of expectancy at home. I, I don't know how it works, but I feel like they wait by the front door because whenever I unlock the door or knock on the door, it takes like less than two seconds <laughs> For them to run to the door and be like, Dad, you're home. Welcome. Like, yay. I'm like, how did you, like, get to the door so quickly? You know what I mean? Like, what were you doing sitting by the door waiting? I don't understand. And this is the heart of expectancy, right? Like, the, the heart of a, of a child waiting for his dad to come home. Like, come, where is dad? Why isn't he home yet? And sometimes I'm like, kids, I was gone for an hour. <laughs> what's the deal? Like, what, what, what's going on here? And But this is the heart of of uh, like I, I'm waiting on God. I, I know God will come through. I know he will provide. I know I can trust him. Do we live like this? Do we have this expectancy, this, this deep sense of expectancy in our heart? I, I know God can work. And what we do is we say, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to him. I'm going to call upon his name. I'm going to seek him. I'm going to seek the Lord and his strength. I'm going to seek his face continually. Number three, you can write this down. God is continually good and faithful towards his people. And I, ho I hope to encourage you this morning. I hope to just give us a moment reading the scriptures. And, and there's something about coming back to the word of God. And there's something about coming back and saying, God, I'm so grateful for who you are and who you are in my life. God is continually good and faithful towards his people. Verse 13, it says, You descendants of Israel, his servant, 
sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. That's a few. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. He also confirmed it to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as a portion of your inheritance. When there were only a few in number, very few, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another. Look, look at how God protects them and takes care of them. He says, he allowed no one to oppress them, and he rebuked kings for their sakes, saying, do not touch my anointed ones and do not harm my prophets. God protected his people, didn't he? He covered Abraham, covered Isaac, covered Jacob. And he, he says it in this, this terms of this everlasting covenant. Like this, this means God is set up to protect his people and to care for his people for the long haul. God is in it for the long haul. God is in it. This, this idea of everlasting is, is a really long time. This idea of a thousand generations is like, that's, that's a number of generations, Right? How far are we in? I have no idea. I'm sure someone has counted. It's a long time. And God is faithful to his people. To remember, as we see here, it says, you know, re remember his covenant forever. To remember is not merely reminiscing. We like to reminisce, don't we? Coming up on Thanksgiving, we're like, oh, remember, remember when Grandma Sally used to cook that, that dish? Oh, the, it was so good. We like to reminisce, don't we? We, like, call things to mind. Oh, remember when our team won the Super Bowl? That was amazing. And, oh, remember, and we, we like to reminisce things. But this isn't reminiscing. Re remembering what it is actually here is when I remember tied directly to it is a call to action. So I'm not just going to reminisce, oh, that was nice, and then I forget it. What, what's going to happen is I'm going to remember, and that remembrance, like, leads me to, to take action. This, this is real important because... What's happening here is he's saying, remember who God is, remember the covenant that he's made, and do something about it. Sometimes we forget this. Sometimes we, we, we give thanks or we remember, and there's no action tied to it. And so it kind of falls to the ground. We, we forget again, right? And so here there's this long-lasting remembrance. Like, I, I need to act upon that which was recalled. I need to act upon what God is speaking to me. I need to remember what he's saying and when I remember it, it's like, okay, what, what now, how, how am I going to respond to what God is doing? How am I going to respond? How am I going to take action? What's key is, um, you know, we're, we're all going to mess up. We're all going to slip, fall, make mistakes. Unless you're Pastor Eddie, he's perfect. He doesn't make mistakes. Um, you know, there's something that, that happens in life where we, where we fall flat on our face and let me tell you this morning, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. We can get up and we can say, you know what? <laughs> God is so faithful. And then we begin to look for these markers in our life. I had this little sign, this little sign by my coffee maker in the morning that says, uh, I need a little bit of coffee and a whole lot of Jesus, right? It's a marker. Like, drink some coffee. Jesus, please help me. But we when we fall flat on our face, we look up and we have these things in our life that, that are anchors for our family. We have values, right? Value system with our, our family, with our friends that hold, like that anchor us down. Okay, I'm going back to the word of God. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to pray. We have these anchors. This is why in, in, for the people of Israel, they would stack rocks and they would stack them up and there was like these beautiful rock formations that way, years and years later, when their kids would be walking by, Dad, what are those rocks? He'd be able to say, sit down, son. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you about this, this marker. You know, let me tell you about these, these rocks. And he began to, to tell the story of Egypt and, and God leading the people out and Moses and, and striking the rock and, and the, the manna every day and the quails. And okay, let me, let me tell you the stories of our people. And then let me tell you this story. And so every time you see those rocks, right, we'd, they'd be able to to re remember who God was and then take action and live for him again. I don't know about you, but I, I sure do need to remember this morning that God is continually forever faithful to his people. Amen? Amen. Number four is this. 
God is king over all the earth. God is king over all the earth. Look at, the action. Look at this action now. They remembered, and now they're like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm going to take action in response to the king. Verse 23, sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim good news of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared among all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. So ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name. Bring an offering, come before him, worship the Lord in holy attire. God was to be elevated above every other little, little sea god. There was a, a distinction. Like, okay, these little sea gods, somebody formed it out of a clay or out of gold or out of silver or it's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle god. It's a possession god. It's something that I've made out of my own accord that somebody has created that I decide I'm, I'm going to worship this, this little sea god. And so here we find this, distinct, this distinction where God is placed not even like barely above every other God, but like far above every other God. Like, listen, God made everything that little sea gods, that idols are made of. <laughs> so there's not even a comparison. Like God made the heavens and the earth. And so when I, when I have this proper perspective of who God is, then it reminds me of how cheap idols truly are. Like, why would I give myself to something so cheap, so flimsy? Like, so why would I give myself to something that is breakable, that's defeatable, that has no power at all? Why, why would I give my, my life to serve something that's cheap? It doesn't make any sense. Instead, there's this, there's this uh, perspective shift where I'm like, you know, God is so distinct. God is so far above. He's the only God that I will serve. He's the only one that I will um, give glory to. He's the only one that I'll serve. The result is really continuing to ascribe or, or to, to give glory to his name. To say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to lay the glory on you, God, because you are the one who deserves it. You are the one who deserves it. You know, the, the biggest transformation that you could see in someone else's life. Listen, I, I've, I've loved being in the church for a bunch of years. The biggest transformation I see in people's lives is when they take on this posture of ascribing to the Lord the glory due to his name. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what happens is someone may be a Christian, but they're not submitted. Someone be, may be a, a Christian, but they're not willingly like coming under who the Lord is. And when they make this shift that says, you know what? I need to actually place God properly. He needs to be far above everything else. I need to be in a posture of humility and servanthood and submission and obedience. And what happens is my heart begins to change. My mind begins to change because it's not about me anymore, myself and I. It's about God and how could I ascribe glory to him and who he is. Come on, the biggest shift I've ever seen in someone's life is when they say, you know what? I'm tired of living for myself. I'm tired of giving myself all the glory. I need to make this shift and give all the glory to God. Believe it, there's still Christians out there who still, even though they're, they follow Jesus, they've yet to fully submit and say, you know what? God, you have my life. You have my heart. You have my mind. You have my soul. And I hope that we'd be in the place to, to be willing to, to give him the glory due his name. Amen? So good. Number five. Write this down. Even creation understands his glory and power. Come on, God is so good. God is so glorious, so powerful. We have this picture here of all creation saying, yep, God is great. God is good. Verse 30 says, tremble before him all the earth. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. Let the heavens be joyful. Let the earth rejoice. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. 
Let the sea roar, everything it contains. Let the field rejoice and everything that is in it. Then the trees of the forest will sing for joy in the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. All creation, I, I love we have this picture of all creation taking joy in the presence of the Lord. And if creation <laughs> understands who its creator is, in this, as we see this pictured here, and honors him as such, then I, I think it's, it's pretty fitting that we would do the same. When we forget our creator, we get in trouble, don't we? When we forget who created us, when we forget God and it, that we are his creation, the world is his creation, we can get in big trouble. The Pharisees got in trouble one time because they were trying to hush people down. They're saying, listen, be quiet. Do not worship Jesus. <laughs> and Palm Sunday, everyone was like, Jesus, we worship you. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And they're like, we worship you. And the Pharisees were like, be quiet. What are you talking about? Why are you worshiping him? And I love this, this picture that Jesus gives. He says, listen, guys, you, you, could, you could try and shut them down from worshiping me. That's fine. You could. But he said, even, then even the rocks would cry out. Like, if you try and silence people from singing out, even creation understands that in the presence of God, like, we, need, we cannot help but, but praise God. We cannot help. And so if everyone was quiet, then the earth would still rejoice. Here's the picture here. I love this. All creation understands who God is, his place, <laughs> and we will ascribe the glory to his name. And so Jesus is like, guys, why— <laughs> What, what are you talking about? Like, shame on you for thinking that we will not praise God. And in that case, worship Jesus. Listen, the void will be filled, whether it's by us or whether it's by creation. The void will be filled because even creation understands that God must be worshipped. That God must be honored and praised. Worship team, you can come on up. First, number six is this. You can write this down. Our song every season can be to give thanks to the Lord. Our song every season can be to give thanks to the Lord. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithfulness is everlasting. Then say, save us, God of our salvation. Gather us and save us from the nations. To give thanks to your holy name. And glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Come on, let the song of our season always be to give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his faithfulness is everlasting. Maybe this is the next doxology that we memorize. Maybe this is the next song that we pen and sing as a church. Maybe this needs to, to be written on the mirror of your bathroom because... We want to remember always to give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithfulness is everlasting. Maybe this is the closest and most important scripture for the next season of your life. Maybe at least the next week. We cannot say this enough. We cannot sing this enough. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Blessed be the Lord. There's this uh, pretty um, silly Pizza Hut commercial, but it, worth bear, it, it bears worth repeating. Not only because I'm hungry and wouldn't mind a slice of pizza right now, but um, it works. <laughs> There's a Pizza Hut commercial that declares, no one can out pizza Pizza Hut. You heard that before? Like nobody can out pizza the hut. I would say of the church this morning, and I would hope to declare this would be our posture, is no one can outthink the people of God. Nobody should outthink us. There should not be one other group or person or thing on earth that outthinks the people of God. Because God has been so good to us. He has shown us so much grace. He has shown us so much undeserved kindness. He has showed us, so, like the list goes on and on and on. What has he done for you? Fill in the blank. God has been so good to us. No one else is going to outthink me. 
because God has been so good in my life. Amen? No, no one is going to be able to outthink the church because God has been so good to us. We'll always give thanks to the Lord. It's what we do. It's, it's how we live. It's how we carry ourselves. We're always going to give thanks to the Lord for He is good and His faithfulness is everlasting. Would you stand with me as I pray for us this morning? God, we declare to you again, we, we want to give thanks to you. You are good and your faithfulness is everlasting. God, I pray that we would make this personal this morning. We realize that you are faithful in our life. You are faithful in our family. You are faithful with our church. God, you are faithful. We stand on you. We stand on your promises. We stand on um, <laughs> your strength. We stand on the covenant that is everlasting that you made with your people. And we benefit from that today as children of Abraham, children by faith. We, we're so grateful, God, that we can stand sure in you today. God, as we head into a week of giving thanks, we, we know that we're going to see people giving thanks for their food, for their family, for their football team. We, we know that. We want to go into this week with a mindset of giving thanks to you, God. Having a correct perspective on who you are and ascribing to you the glory due your name. Jesus, you're so good to us. You're so good. You're so kind. We don't have anything to fear. We don't have anything to be ashamed of. We don't have to constantly look over our shoulder and fear. We don't have to constantly look over behind us and, and say, oh no, I did this in my past. This happened to me in my past. Someone did this to me. This was the, this was the mistake that I made. We don't have to look over our shoulder in fear and doubt and shame. No, we can actually look over our shoulder and see that your goodness is there running after us. God, that you're good to us. When we look over our shoulder, we don't see our wretched past. We see amazing grace. God, when we look over our shoulder, we, we don't see all, all the sins that we committed when we were 14 years old. No, we, we see that you've given us the righteousness of Christ. God, we stand in that this morning. And we want to thank you for your goodness in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, you, Lord, oh, your mercy never fails me, all my days I've been held in your hands, from the moment that I wake up until I goodness of God. In all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so Running after me, your goodness 
Thank you.